Hi children, in this video I will be dealing with the applications of biotechnology in the field of agriculture. And in this video we are going to see the two types of crops that are designed by biotechnology. One is the Bt cotton and the second one is the nematode resistant tobacco. So, before going into the details of each, let us know uh, how is this strategy in the form of a flow chart. Remember there is a source organ, uh, source organism which has the gene of interest. Also there is the host organism into which we incorporate the gene of interest. So, the two organisms involved are the source organism from which we derive the gene of interest and the host organism into whose genome we incorporate the gene of interest. So, I will draw it in the form of a flow chart. From the source organism, the gene of interest is transferred to the host organism. It is transferred, in, uh, it is transferred means in the genome it is incorporated, not simply transferred or injected. The genome into the genome, we are incorporating the gene of interest. In the previous chapter, we saw how it is incorporated with the different tools. And once it is incorporated into the genome of the host, what happens to the host? It poses a favorable phenotype. So, the basic protocol in the form of a flow chart, so you will get the flow of the events. The gene of interest is derived from a source organism. It is transferred to the host organism by manipulating its genome. It is incorporated, better word is incorporated into the host organism and as a result the host organism shows a favorable phenotype because the genotype is being altered. On these lines I am going to explain the first biotechnologically developed crop is the Bt cotton. Cotton is prone to the attack of number of insects belonging to different classes like Lepidopterans, Coleopterans, Dipterans. These are the different insects that invade cotton and they are easily prone to the attack of these in insects. So, what is done is we are going to manipulate the genome of the cotton crop. So, using the same guideline with pink color I am going to indicate. The source organism is a bacterium called Bacillus thuringiensis. From this source organism, we are transferring the gene of interest. The gene of interest is cry gene. It is transferred into the host cotton. And once it is incorporated into cotton, what happens to that cotton? It shows a favorable phenotype. It becomes pest resistant or insecticidal. It will become resistant to the attack of ball worms, borers, flies, mosquitoes all belong to the categories Dipterans, Coleopterans and Lepidopterans. Now this talking about the cry gene, the cry gene we know it is expressed into mRNA and mRNA is translated into the protein. We know this, this is called transcription and the next event is called translation. And finally, the product we get is a toxin called Bt toxin. So, that also you should remember Bt toxin that is produced by the expression of the cry gene. Now, this cry gene is only taken from the Bacillus thuringiensis and incorporated into the genome of cotton plant and finally, the cotton plant on the leaves of the cotton plant there is this Bt toxin. This Bt toxin is fully in the leaves and therefore, when the insects try to invade 
or make their way into or make holes into the cotton what happened they die because the Bt toxin is toxic. How is the Bt toxin produced? The cry gene has got expressed that is underwent transcription and translation and we get the Bt toxin which is insecticidal. Clear? And thus we get fluffy cotton with a lot of volume. This is the picture of cotton, Bt cotton. It is not easily attacked by the insects because now all the leaves have become poisonous to the insect because of the Bt toxin produced by the cry gene. The cry gene got expressed into the Bt toxin. Now all the Bt toxins are incorporated in the leaves. So, insects will not make their entry into the plants and the plants will grow flourish and produce a lot of cotton which man can take. See, this is an invaded cotton. Now, there are different cry genes and remember the cry should stand with a small letter C. There are different cry genes, cry 1 AC, cry 2 AB and cry 1 AB. The cry 1 AC and cry 2 AB controls cotton ball worms. And cry 1 AB controls the corn borer. These are the names of different pests. This you should learn. These three cry genes that are mentioned. Clear? So, I hope you have understood how Bt cotton is formed. Follow the normal protocol that is the gene of interest from the source organism is incorporated into the genome of the host organism and as a result the host organism produces a favorable phenotype. On those lines I did with cotton the host organism here is Bacillus thuringiensis and the gene of interest is the cry gene. This cry gene is transferred from Bacillus thuringiensis and incorporated into genome of cotton. As a result, what happens to the cotton? The cotton has become resistant to the attack of insects of the three classes I have mentioned, coleopterans, diphtherians and lepidopterans. Now, what has happened inside the cotton? The cry gene which was incorporated, this is the plant D, uh, DNA, cotton DNA and we incorporated that this cry gene was incorporated here. Now, what happened? The cry gene got expressed. That is, after transcription and translation, it produces the protein Bt toxin, which is very toxic or insecticidal. So, the, the leaves, if were eaten or the roots, if were bored by the insects, were killed because it was very toxic. Now, a question arises. If it is toxic, why is it not toxic to the source organism? The source organism has this gene that is the cry gene which expresses into the Bt toxin which is highly toxic, even toxic to man, we also cannot eat it. Then why is it not toxic to the source organism Bacillus thuringiensis, which bears it, it can easily die. Now the answer to that is this cry gene is expressed into Bt toxin in the in in the Bacillus thuringiensis it is produced in the protoxin form inactive protoxin remember the key words inactive protoxin form which is not toxic to the uh, source organism Bacillus thuringiensis but once it is taken eaten by the insect once the insect eats it what happens is that this inactive protoxin gets into the gut it gets into the gut see it's the mouth of the insect it got in once it gets into the gut this is a let the yellow be the protoxin bt toxin once it gets into the gut what happens is that the gut has an alkaline pH. Remember the pH necessary to make it active is alkaline pH. This alkaline pH makes the protoxin into active toxin. Now what happened? The inactive protoxin becomes an active toxin. 
not only that it was in the form of crystals the inactive was in the form of crystals now slowly what happens these crystals will solubilize and if i show it with white color like the sugar crystals it appears it will get deposited on the gut walls especially the mid gut epithelial walls see these crystals like sugar crystal get solubilized once it gets solubilized next thing what happen pores are formed so i'll just make it porous it becomes porous and once the gut becomes porous what will definitely happen the fluid from outside in the viscera itself inside the body the outside fluid of the insect gets in once the fluid gets in what happens to the gut it swells so the same gut i'm making it swollen once it swells so it's swollen it burst that is called lysis and the insect dies when the uh, gut burst the insect dies so remember that sequence it solubilizes make pores then what happens the gut it swells then lysis and the insect dies remember that sequence so the active toxin is in which form it is in the crystal uh, the inactive toxin is in the crystalline form so these crystals are taken in once it gets into the gut what happen it get get deposited on the walls of the mid gut and then these crystals solubilizes then it forms pores on the mid gut once pores are formed what happens swells how it swells water from the surrounding enters swells finally burst ruptures and the insect dies so this is why it is not harmful to the source organism but it's harmful to the pest which is the insect what is necessary for making the inactive toxin into active toxin is the alkaline ph which is present in the gut so very clear i am again briefing it uh, it is not harmful to the source organism bacillus thuringiensis the reason is that it is in the inactive form inside it is a inactive protoxin form so it is not at all harmful but once it gets into the gut of the insect what happens the gut has the alkaline ph which makes it active when makes it active what happens the crystals solubilizes once it solubilizes it get deposited on the walls of the mid gut epithelial walls and what happens pores are formed once pores are formed the fluid extracellular fluid in the surrounding gets in and therefore the gut swells when it swells it burst and the insect dies so that's all about bt cotton now moving on to the next plant the next plant is nematode resistant tobacco now we know tobacco plant is useful to man because the leaves which part of the tobacco is used the leaves are used for making tobacco and it is uh, being used in different forms uh, in the form of smoking or chewing whatever okay so tobacco is needed by man okay we need healthy leaves with large lamina but what happens is that the roots you have to remember it's the roots the roots of the tobacco are easily invaded by nematodes see this is the healthy root see the first diagram is depicting healthy roots very healthy roots not invaded by the nematode and so as a result look at the leaves very fleshy broad lamina and healthy leaves but if the roots are invaded by the nematode what happens is root knots are formed can you see root knots produced and in these root knots these nematodes multiply reproduce and invade and this will affect the yield and finally what happens the leaves that are produced are not good see unhealthy leaves look at the leaves very unhealthy chlorotic leaves which droop and from this we cannot yield a uh, good yield of tobacco so that is due to this rooted uh, knotted roots caused due to the invasion of nematode so the pest is a nematode and the name of that nematode is melodigna incognitia 
melodigmia incognitia it is pronounced like this melodigne incognitia that's the name of a nematode this nematode invade the roots not the leaves it invade the roots once it invade the roots what happens it uh, form the root knots and it will affect the yield and finally what happened the leaves will not develop properly unhealthy and we, you know, we cannot get a good yield from tobacco so we should see that the roots are not invaded by this particular parasite endoparasite nematode so that we get a good yield of leaves and look at the healthy leaves here so we are going to see the strategy operating here it goes on the same lines as i told you i'll bring that protocol or strategy we have the source organism and we are having the host organism and the favorable phenotype here the source organism is in the case of this particular uh, tobacco the source from which source we are deriving the gene of interest is a virus that has rna as a genetic material we know it's retrovirus or it can be a transposon it is a genetic element which replicates via a rna it replicates via an rna okay so uh, the source can be a virus which has rna as a genetic material or it can be a uh, transposon transposon is a mobile genetic element which replicates via a via an mrna clear either this or this any one can be used as a source so i put the source here then from this source we are taking the gene of interest the name of the gene of interest is nematode specific gene it's easy for you to remember it is to uh, target the nematode so the name of the gene is nematode specific gene is transferred from this source into the host and the host is tobacco and as a result what is a favorable phenotype because of this alteration in the genotype we have nematode resistant tobacco plant is produced so we follow the same protocol but now the way it is done is different it's a totally different strategy a novel strategy is utilized here that is once this nematode specific gene is introduced into the tobacco plant once it enters the tobacco plant immediately this gene if i show that particular gene in the form of a dna segment this gene immediately forms into sense rna and anti sense rna we know genes transcribes into an mrna but here it transcribes both the dna templates see this is one dna template and this is the other dna template both the dna templates gets transcribed into rnas the names of these rnas are one is sense rna and the other rna is called anti sense rna so usually it is from one dna strand only one of the strand acts as a template for the synthesis of one rna that rna is called mrna this is the usual and then this is translated into protein this is the usual but it deviated from the usual what happened is both the strands acts as template to form two rnas the name of the rna is sense rna and anti sense rna if suppose the dna strand was for ease i'm giving a a a a g g one strand is a a a g g the other strand will be definitely t t t t t t c c okay now both the strand acted as template 
so we have one strand will be having u u u g g g the other strand will be having a a a c c clear so two rnas are produced not one rna there are two rnas and being complementary to each other now you look use complementary to a again the next use complementary to a so i'll be bringing these two so you see this strand u u u u g g g look at the other strand a a a c c c so this is antisense this i pulled from here from the antisense and this strand was pulled from here the sense now look these two are complementary to each other look yes they are complementary you can see a pairs with u a pairs with u a pairs with u a pairs with u c pairs with g and c pairs with u uh, with g so here we see that these two sense and anti sense rnas being complementary to each other what happened this happened hydrogen bonds were formed between a and u double bonds and between Uh, C and G triple bonds. Hydrogen bonding was formed, and what formed DS RNA, double stranded RNA was formed. Now, very very important thing happens. So, did you understand what happened in the host? Once again, what is in the host? I am going to explain. Same guidelines as BT cotton or normal procedure. that is there's a source organism from which we get the gene of interest the source organism can be a virus having rna as a genetic material or can be a transposon which is a mobile genetic element which replicates via an rna this from this particular host a uh, source we are taking the gene of interest that is nematode specific gene and it's transferred into tobacco once it gets into tobacco what happens to the dna double stranded dna of that particular gene it immediately forms two rna sense and anti sense rna that's why it's depicted by wavy line and sense and anti sense rna being complementary immediately form complementary base pairs to form the ds rna up till here is it clear definitely it will be clear because it's purely application of uh, biotechnology or rdna technology now what is done is we know about the nematode let this strand of dna depicts the strands of the nematode the pest let this be the dna of the pest or the nematode it's an endoparasite now there is a particular gene in this dna strand of the nematode let me highlight this part this particular part is called the housekeeping gene as a name suggest we have housekeeping in hotels and all as a name suggest this particular gene creates a favorable environment for the nematode to survive inside the roots of the tobacco plant that means it uh, produces this when it's expressed i'm going to make it undergo transcription and translation it produces a protein which serves as an enzyme and this enzyme what it dissolves the roots and make holes and this uh, um, nematode can easily penetrate it's an endoparasite so it's not much equipped with other structures for digging and crawling and for making a a tunnel so these enzymes that are secreted by the housekeeping gene dissolves the roots and creates tunnels for it to penetrate and reside inside and once it gets the favorable environment it multiplies and invade new roots and form and like way they become very knotted clear so now what we have done the biotechnologists has done they block this production survival is because of this particular protein produced by the housekeeping gene so this was blocked it was blocked not at the transcriptional level it was not blocked here it was blocked at this level so i am reiterating the block this particular product was not allowed to be produced it will be allowed to be produced if transcription is allowed and translation is allowed but here transcription was allowed but translation was blocked 
how was this translation blocked so here it was not blocked at the gene level we can block it here or we can block it here okay the blocking was done at the translational level transcription took place it took place and formed the mrna but further formation into the proteins was blocked how it was blocked now a continuation with the previous step so let me minimize this this is occurring inside the nematode what i showed you now is inside the nematode that i have shrunk now this is inside the nematode i'm writing here inside the nematode what had happened and earlier what i have depicted till dsrna is what is happening inside the tobacco this is what happened in the tobacco now what happens is so two distinct process occurring you should remember where and where that a uh, uh, dsrna was all till there it occurred inside the tobacco so once that nematode specific gene was introduced into the tobacco it immediately formed sense and anti sense rna and and sense and anti sense rna being complementary form dsrna up till here we stopped now at the same time what is in the nematode in the entire stretch of dna there's one particular gene called the housekeeping gene it uh, expresses into a protein which allows the tobacco uh, which allows the nematode to survive in the roots so we are blocking it not at the trans uh, we are not blocking at the transcriptional level we are blocking at the translational level how it is blocked simple as this this dsrna of which was inside the tobacco because of the nematode specific gene this will come and bind where it will not bind at the dna it will bind at the rna so once again if i make this side bigger now follow this what is this called dsrna what i'm pulling out is called from this box is the dsrna this dsrna comes and binds not to the housekeeping gene but it binds to the mrna of the nematode now what happens because it's bound to the mrna is this protein produced no but translation took place the mrna was formed but it was not allowed to translate into the protein because of the dsrna clear so these two processes are occurring in the two different organism one is occurring inside the plant and the other one is occurring inside the nematode both are manipulated not only the plant both the plant and the nematode is manipulated the plant manipulation is very simple it follows the same guidelines of uh, bt cotton once again i'm repeating nematode specific gene this is the gene of interest is nematode specific gene from the source organism it can be virus having rna as a genetic material or transposon which replicates via an rna is transferred where into tobacco okay now i'll put it inside tobacco now once it gets into the tobacco so this is the nematode specific gene once it gets into tobacco immediately it unwinds and what it forms once it forms two strands of mrna this is one baby and this one the name of this is sense rna and this is anti sense rna and i told you because the sense and anti sense rna being complementary and i gave the example a a a a a and g g g so here it will be u u u u and c c being complementary what happened these two what happened complementary base pairing took place and what was formed the double stranded rna up till here is it clear it must be very clear this is happening in the tobacco that's complete at the same time manipulation is done in the nematode that worm this is the worm it's a uh, its dna and one specific part of the dna i'll highlight it with blue color very very important part for the survival of the nematode that is the housekeeping gene and the role of this housekeeping gene is it expresses itself into a protein that enables it to survive inside the roots that is it helps it to dissolve the root layers and make tunnel and enable an environment suitable that's why it's called housekeeping gene but what is done now is this novel strategy adopted here is this dsrna which i've indicated now like a ladder it comes and binds not at the gene level 
it comes and binds at the mRNA. And what happens as a result, we can say transcription is allowed, but translation was blocked. So, this is known as RNA interference or it is also known as silencing of RNA for prevention of translation. of the nematode gene clear so we have completed the nematode resistant uh, the the tobacco that is resistant to nematodes usually tobacco plants are attacked by nematode and the name of that nematode nematode ash helminthus it's a round worm called melegdigna incognitia it invades the roots and have, therefore affects the yield and the strategy is a very very novel strategy one is the regular mechanism exactly how in bt cotton from the source organism to the host organism but it's different once it enters the tobacco what happens the gene uh, unwinds and we have two rnas sense rna and antisense rna and sense rna and antisense rna being complementary from dsrna stop it there meanwhile the nematode level what is done there is a specific gene called the housekeeping gene which is very necessary for the nematode plant uh, for the nematode to survive in the plant. This gene expresses into a protein which gives a necessary environment for it to multiply in the uh, roots that is it basically produces these enzymes those enzymes which helps in dissolving the roots and creating tunnels and passages for it to multiply. So, what is done? We are blocking the production of this protein by the housekeeping gene. So, we are blocking not at the transcriptional level, we are allowing transcription, it is allowed to transcribe and we get an mRNA. But what this mRNA is not allowed to translate into that particular protein, it is blocked by binding this dsRNA. This dsRNA that was in the tobacco binds automatically like a, a lock and key binds to the M, uh, to this mRNA produced by the housekeeping gene and preventing it from forming the particular protein which helps it in uh, giving favorable conditions to reside inside the roots of tobacco. So, I hope you have understood the two strategies and remember in both the cases because the host is not E. coli. How is the gene of interest in both the case? So, I am just taking out the general mechanism in both the cases whether it is Bt cotton or the nematode resistant tobacco plant in both these TMCs the GMCs in both these GMCs the host is not E. coli it is not E. coli. So, how is the gene of interest transmitted? So, do not forget by agrobacterium tumefaciens by the vector agrobacterium tumefaciens serves as a vector for the transmission of the gene of interest from the source organism to the host organism. So, we always remember in biotechnology if the host is E. coli we have plasmids, but now the host is a plant and if the host is a plant we know it is agrobacterium tumefaciens. It is with the help of agrobacterium tumefaciens that the gene of interest is transmitted from the source organism to the host organism. So, therefore, you have to incorporate that. So, in both the cases what is done the gene of interest from the source organism is incorporated into the host organism with the help of agrobacterium tumefaciens and finally, the host organism having an altered genotype shows a favorable phenotype. In uh, cotton it is very direct and very simple whereas, in nematode it is a totally different strategy which is very novel. Yeah. Thank you.